welcome. This is episode 20 of Get Real with Andy. I'm Andy Roman. Today I want to talk about being invisible, but I want to talk about the power of vision also. I have a great story to start off with. There was an experiment done by some people with an elementary school kid where they falsified his records to make the kid look like he was a genius. And these people showed these records to the teachers and the teachers said, oh, that explains why he's so calm or looks bored in class because he's bored. He's bored with this. He's too smart for all this. And so they actually started treating him differently because their vision of the kid changed. And are you ready for this? Not only did the child's performance in school seriously improve, but his IQ also went up. And so the vision, the external vision of that kid is just so powerful. And, you know, then I'm going to jump around a little bit, but there are some, there are some people that grow up in large families. And if they're not the oldest or the youngest kid, they tend to be more invisible in terms of not being so forthcoming with their feelings or their needs or not you know, addressed so much, especially kids in uh, large families. And so there's this sense that they're not seen by external people, parents, and they become more invisible. And these people, and actually, you know, a lot of us, most of us, we end up carrying secrets. We end up carrying our own private ruminations about things that we we don't know who to share that with. And sometimes we never share it. And sometimes our deepest thoughts and ruminations only show up in our dreams. And that's when our defenses are down and we're actually, the dreams show what we're really dealing with, that invisible is really a burden. Nobody should be invisible. And when we carry things within us, like secrets or secret ruminations, we're, we're then invisible. And the more we carry, the more burdensome and the less visible we are. I might have mentioned this in another episode, but I actually met a man years ago when I was a teenager. His name was Sidney Girard. He was a therapist who wrote a book called The Transparent Self. And he said, you can judge a person's mental health by the degree to which they authentically let themselves be known by another person. I like that definition. It really shows that self-revealing, to be seen, is a, an important part of mental health. And of course, doing that is part of connecting with other people. So if the power of vision, the power of other people's vision, is so potent for us when we are children, I believe it also contributes to our mental health and possibly our problems when we're grown-up people. I also noticed something else that I want to include in this episode, that when I ride on the image that I have, you know, when I ride coast on the image of some kind of good impressions that you've had of me, some kind of reputation that I've garnered for myself, I actually miss out. That's an that's an act of unconsciousness. That's actually me conceptualizing myself, losing actual sight, and actually becoming invisible to myself. My concept of myself is really a form of invisibility, of not seeing reality. And of course, my whole theme in this series is getting real, and that means seeing reality. So the power of vision, the power of actually being seen. I know that there are some things that are essentially invisible. Nobody can really see or know how I experience my own self. It's unique to you, it's unique to me, and it's actually invisible. So the power of the upside of invisibility is that I get to commune with that and be with that super mystery of my real self. 
But I do want to say, when I worked as a nurse in the hospital, I actually got to be with people before and after they died. And I would notice very, um, very acutely that there is a difference between a person when they're alive and when they're dead. They stop breathing. And I am saying, and this is new information, but who we really are is that difference between a dead body and a live body. That life force is who we actually are. So the power of invisibility is when I get to look at the invisible within me. That may be invisible to other people. I'm saying I want everything else that's realistically visible to be visible. I don't want to be somebody who carries secrets. I want to be somebody who tells the truth. And I live in a constant state of unburdening myself by actually speaking up. It's a way of life. You know, there are some people who look like they're very visible because they're outgoing. They have a high contact kind of a lifestyle. And some people would call them extroverts. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually authentically visible. A lot of people use their actions as a way to hide out. And so Maya is a very interesting thing when we take it to the at a human level. Maya is really the illusion, the, the, that which is not real, but it looks real. And so as a therapist, I'm in the reality business. I mean, I'm actually in the reality business just as a human being. We all are, really, because we're here. But to see through people's unreality, and the trickiest part as a therapist is, when people think about themselves, what they think about themselves, they think it's real, but it really, really isn't. And not that I know you better than you know yourself, but sometimes people, and I, I mean, sometimes I can see your blind spot way better than you can. I've seen that in groups where the person whose turn it is just doesn't see what everybody else in the room can see about them. So the power of vision, we can help each other by seeing deeply into reality. Seeing that life force is the deepest reality to go to. And that unlocks vision about everything else. So there can be a lot of insight. Don't you love that word? Insight. That means inner vision. Okay. The power of vision and visibility. Is there a downside to being visible? Yes, I already mentioned it a little bit. The downside of being visible is that people have their own ideas and images of how I present myself. Because being visible really depends on two things, what I reveal and what you're capable of seeing. And so I am dependent on you to see me clearly. And I'm rooting for you to be as conscious as you can so that you will see me accurately. It's a wonderful, sometimes twisted game we play here with each other. This is welcome to the world of relationships where pretty much every one of us is hallucinating our own dream state. And we think we're in the same reality and we're looking at each other. You know, isn't that the compelling thing in the Avatar movie? You know, I see you. This is so beautiful. We're moved by that because we, we want to be seen. We want, I want to be somebody who sees clearly, who sees you clearly. And I have to look into myself in order to do that. All right. I'm choosing a, a visible life. I want to make myself visible and play large, even though there are risks in how you see me. May not be accurate. That's happened to me. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you for, you know, subscribing to this. Okay. Love you. Talk with you soon. Thank you.